Oh my god. You comfortable? A little bit. <laughs> Alright, welcome to Real Talk Podcast episode 43. Yep, welcome. Yep, welcome. <laughs> Just start the intro. The world's gone bloody mad. It has. It it's has. gone mad. It's gone mad. It's and it's ruining my business. Yeah. Our business. Well, the thing, like, yeah, you're right, because we were talking about it the other day, and with the sports show that we just released, that we've just started doing, and then they go out and say that all sport is cancelled. More or less. Not more or less all sport is cancelled. Like, they, they, they're they putting the NBA on hiatus. Yeah. Obviously, all of that shit will be covered in the next yeah, highlight the, reel. Yeah, the next highlight reel, and then... And then, hopefully by then, a decision will have been made as to whether or not there is going to be... Another episode? Yeah. For a while? Yeah. We'll work it out. They've cancelled the production of, like, every major movie. Yep. Because um, of bloody coronavirus. And, um... The country's out of fucking toilet paper. Is it actually out of... Oh, fuck me. <laughs> it's just... It's insane. I know. I People know. have gone insane. And they've pushed back James Bond, so fuck you guys. Yeah. I was looking forward to James Bond coming out, and then they had to go and... be looking forward to it for a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And on top of that, like, they just... I get why they're doing it. They're doing it in the... Like, they're doing it in self... Uh, not self, in, like, the... It, the protection of the nation, or whatever the fuck. And they're looking yeah, after they're the well-being of everybody. They're doing it to stop the spreading. They're doing it to stop the spreading. Not that very serious illness. <laughs> And, like, they've already cancelled the Easter show, they've already, and if there's any overseas watches, the Easter show, especially in Australia, is massive. It's, like, the biggest thing, it takes place in Easter, obviously, it's, like, the biggest it's thing. It's about the only major thing around Easter time here. It, it is the biggest contributor in, like, bringing in money in this state. It's a giant... It's a giant cash cow. Fair. That's, it's a giant fair. Rides and shows and stalls and thousands upon thousands of people go there yeah. every year. And it's been cancelled. And I think the last time the East show was cancelled, they said it was like 19... Oh... Something. It's like 19 something. But it's been like over 100. Spanish flu? They didn't cancel it because of the Spanish flu, did they? I don't know. 19 something would fit. Yeah. Well, they've only had to cancel one of the once. wars, maybe. Maybe, maybe that would make sense. But um, yeah, it's but when they announced that that the Easter show was cancelled, the the people who are in charge of it all that brought tears to their eyes. <laughs> and I don't blame them because the amount of people who like not only like you got to buy a stall to be out there and all that kind of stuff because yeah. heaps of businesses go. They come all over Australia to come to the Easter show to sell their product. And also, like, you got heaps of rides and all that kind of stuff that you got to get rid of now and all that kind of, and all that. But it's just there's so much money is going to be lost because of the Easter Show not going ahead, and it is a real it is a real shame. And on top of that, like they've like, heaps of like bands have stopped touring for for now until further notice. Um, like <laughs> there's a there's a U- like there's a YouTuber who released a book. He was doing a book tour. He stopped. He stopped his book tour. They're not letting him do his book tour anymore. Uh, the guy who makes videos on YouTube had to stop his book tour. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I actually saw his book the other day. Was... They've cancelled a bunch of like all all music festivals. Um, I don't know what it's like everywhere else, but here they've they've banned any unnecessary gatherings of more than five hundred people. Yeah. So, yeah. like, sporting events, I think the NRL here has gone, um... Well, the NRL, it's like... Gone, it's going empty stadiums. Like, I was watching it the other night, and I've never seen a more packed stadium. Yeah, it was the beginning of the season. There won't be any crowd at the next ones. Yeah, I know, but, like, it just goes to show, it's like, you tell, you tell NRL fans, it's like, you can't go to this, and they basically say, fuck you, I'm going to go watch football. No, they actually are not legally allowed to sell tickets. Are they actually? No, they're not allowed. No, it's banned. That's what a ban is. Oh, shit, I'm sure they'll still figure a way to get out, like to get in there. No, the stadiums will be locked. 
It's not something that could be overridden just because I want to watch football. <laughs> Fair. But, um, yeah, no, it's... I All of it is kind of making me a little bit on edge because of it. I, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know if it's a serious disease. I don't know if it's, it's not. not. But it does put people on edge. Like, the more people talk about it and all that kind of stuff. People like to panic. I, uh, yeah, like honestly, like, it's I'm. So they enjoy it. I, it's worrying more. I worry more about the people who panic than the pe- like than the actual <laughs> disease. disease itself. Because you go out, you buy everything, and you leave nothing for everybody else. And yeah, so yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a downer kind of topic, but that's fine. The plague yeah. I signed up for was zombies, and I got, I yeah. got like. <laughs> <laughs> not quite the flu. Look, we all prepared for so, zombies. Like, this, this, to quote the the meme I saw the other day, this virus is bullshit. <laughs> Look, we all prepared to. There was an entire nation of nerds who were just like zombies, <laughs> and it was just like, how about just the flu? Ah, uh-huh. ah. <laughs> but um, next time, can we have zombies? <laughs> but like. We all prepared, like a lot of us, all prepared for zombies ever since we were 13. We started playing like Nazi zombies and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and and then when we get this, we go, oh, fuck. <laughs> Every time there's a major disease and it doesn't turn everyone into man-eating monsters, it, like the entire nerd community kind of goes, oh. Oh, man, I don't get to use that sword I bought at the convention. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's be honest, every single sword that I've bought or that you've bought, or anybody else has bought, has had that thing in the back of their mind. Where it's like, what if I get to kill a zombie with this? Yeah, it's like, how can I kill a zombie with this? And it's yeah. very now easy. the only thing I can use it for is killing intruders. True, that's no fun. Dep- uh, yeah, I mean, to, we live like they. Everybody leaves the security door. Like everybody leaves yeah, that security door. Let's tell the entire internet. <laughs> All of the security. Well, they don't know where. Well, they don't know where I live or what I look like. So good luck finding me. I know at least <laughs> one viewer who does know where we live. Oh shit. <laughs> what? The Last of Us has been delayed. <laughs> um, no, in all seriousness, it it sort of is and has been delayed. Well, might be delayed. The argument here is that it may be pushed back, but they have also now entered. Or suspected to have entered crunch time. Now we've uh, talked yeah. about this before. Yeah, crunch time is not good. Crunch time is but not also, good. also, where's my fucking video game? Because <laughs> like when it, when a studio like when a game studio goes into crunch time, like that is like them working like sixty seventy it's, hours. It's a basically week. them doing sixteen hour days. Everyone like just going in every day yeah. for as long as they can to basically, try and get the game out on time. Basically, living at the office trying to get not, the game out. It is not healthy. No, but this is the thing. It is very rarely inflicted upon them. Mm. Like, it is very rarely like Naughty Dog going. Like in this case, it's probably not Naughty Dog going. You have to stay here to finish the game. Who who usually? It's usually the developers, like the head developers, stay to try and get their game finished. Yeah. And then everyone else feels obliged to stay. Yeah, true. And it's, so it's like it's unofficially you're being made to do it. Yeah, and I heard that like I think like what, what was the last game that went into crunch time? Uh, was... like, like famously went into crunch time. Yeah, Red Dead Two. Red Dead Two. When Red Dead Two went into crunch time, like heaps of, heaps of reports came out from like developers and like testers and all that kind of stuff. I think that saying was like really that they were when... forced yeah. to stay back. Like they were. No, nobody well, ever said they were forced to. Well, there were statements of like people who were complaining about like the over like being overworked during crunch time. Most of those of complaints came from outside of the actual company, though. Yeah. Yeah, so the what I kicked I off could... the whole crunch time debate thing was the the head developer of Red Dead. Yeah. When they interviewed him said that he was working seventy hours a week. Oh right. He was like, I'm doing seventy hours a week to try and get this game finished. Yeah. And then they sort of like hooked onto that and they were like, You made everyone work seventy hours and he was like, That's not what happened. <laughs> There were people who were doing that, but I never once told anybody that they had to work. Right. 
I need to get that. I need, I need to get it up. Like that, um, what do you call it? The article. I need to get that article up. I can't remember who wrote it. Um, I shouldn't have. Oh, fuck, I, ne- I, should, I have that habit of bringing up... Topics bringing up, you've not researched. You yeah, bringing noticed. up stuff that I hadn't researched, but it just pops into my head. But I thought it was very, I, it's very interesting, though. Yeah, so the issue with that being how do you monitor something that you're technically doing by choice? You shouldn't have to. I, it should get to a point where you look at something and you're like, the only way this is going to get finished is if we work 60 hours a week. So the release date should be pushed back. Yeah. Well, that's what a good video game company would do. A, a bad video game company the would just is, look at it and just go... Mm. You've also got to remember that 90% of the time these developers are answering to Sony or Microsoft. Oh, or, yeah. Like the big so ones like, who are paying the bills. And they're all that making stuff, so. the game. Yeah. But they'll are. get the credit, but also there's somebody else going, where's my game? Like, yeah. That would be such, like, that, that'd be so intense just to have, like, a big company like Sony or Microsoft or something like that breathing down your throat, breathing down your neck, going, like, it's deadline, where's the game? It's not ready yet. And then having to tell that fucking giant of a company, he's like, we need to push it back a few months, it's not ready. I feel like... EA would... Sony is pretty good with so, just going, take your time. Yeah. Because I think they've worked out that having the perfect game yeah. arrive on your console late is better than having an unpolished piece of shit. And then you have someone like EA who would just... I feel like EA would be oh, EA pushing out... Oh, EA is 100% like... Because... I don't care. If yeah. it's not done, release it anyway, we'll patch it later. Yeah, exactly. And I... Like I, I keep on going back Battlefront two, and I keep going back to Doom because Doom was one of those games was obviously was not ready yet, hit deadline, and they all said we are not. Com-, they all basically said we're not comfortable with this, and we want to push it back. I mean, Red Dead Redemption was delayed by two goddamn years, so like I yeah, then but- for that I kind of understand the like the the need feeling of having to go into crunch yeah like the six month well the three months before that was released because you're like i've already delayed it by two years yeah like you can't really get away with pushing that back again yeah true but also the animation of a horse's testicles shrinking (laughs) in the cold was not a necessary thing to animate and if they'd not come out and gone oh it does this nobody would have noticed no no one, no one would have noticed. But they put so much time and effort into every single animation, every 3D animation and rendering of that game. Just yeah. like from... Everything looks photorealistic. Yeah. Like, everything from the horse's mane... To like, blood spatter, to like, there's scuff marks on your guns yeah. over time. And like, you have to clean them. And just the realistic, like, the realistic aspect of that game, where it's like, if you don't... Like, in every other game, you don't need to eat, but in this game, if you don't eat after a while, you will start, your health will start to go down. Your health, your stamina, and your... And if you don't look after yourself, like, if you don't keep yourself hygienic, if you don't, like, You you need to regularly wash yourself, you need to regularly wash and feed your horse, you need to regularly clean your guns. Yeah. There is no fast travel. You have to catch trains if you want to fast travel anywhere. Is there no fast travel? Oh, you're right. There's no fast travel because so it just goes fast in the travel, I think you can unlock a fast travel map from the camp. Mm. So you can fast travel to a place, but you can't fast travel back. Right. So if you're on the other side of the map and you're like, ah, oh, I should probably drop all this shit off back at home. You actually can't. You actually have to ride your horse all the way back. Yeah, or but... go to the nearest train station. But, like... I, I know what you're talking about, but there is a fast travel of some sorts where, like, if you get onto a trail it'll go into cinematic mode and oh, the you horse can put will it take in, you, you there. can put it in cinematic mode and it will but that doesn't stop the wildlife no, it doesn't in the ma- game no it doesn't stop random encounters yeah. so you actually it's actually sometimes worse to do that i thought it would just go into cinematic mode and it would just take me there yeah and then i like walked off and then i all of a sudden i was being attacked by bandits and mm. i was like running back from the kitchen like <laughs> fuck <laughs> I died. I died. No, you know, I got shot. Pretend like I somehow pulled that back from the brink. I, did, I died. Yeah, I got shot in the face by a bat. It was, it was early on in the game. I didn't have the best guns. I didn't even have the pump action shotgun. What's the point? Yeah. 
feel like every, well, not every podcast that we do, when we talk about games, we end up going back to either Jedi Fallen Order or we go back to Red Dead Redemption. First of all, yeah. Jedi Fallen Order was great. Yeah, I know it was. Yeah. I know it was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I know you it did. It was fun. <laughs> the story was good. We're definitely getting a sequel there. That's nice. Can you make a sequel to that game? Yeah. I mean, there's a, now a Jedi in a time where we were supposed to believe that all the Jedi would be hunting down. Yeah, fair. So, yes. Yes, you can. I do... I did like that game. I did like that game quite a bit, actually. I thought it was very fun. I thought it was very... I never played Dark Souls, but I felt like if I had, I would have... Oh, it was very, very Dark Souls. It was very Dark Souls. It was Dark Souls, but forgiving. Dark Souls, but forgiving. Right. (laughs) Yeah, Dark Souls was a bitch. I want to play Dark Souls. I want to. I want to experience that shitstorm that is Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. Or um, what's it called a uh, monster sl- or monster hunter or monster hunters? I've never played Monster Hunter, but I've seen it played, and it it. I don't think it's the same. But apparently that it's game. It's very is grindy. Very, yeah, it's gr- like grindy games, like games that you have to sit at for like a few hours. Yeah, like you've got to hunt one. You can hunt, end up hunting a monster for like an hour. Yeah. And like, there's you got. I I get those kind of games. Like, there's a bit of strategy to it and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like if you and I'm going to take a stab in the dark that if you get a really good weapon, then like the the difficulty of hunting said monster goes down. I think it does more damage. Yeah. I think you have to hunt monsters to craft weapons. Oh, that's cool. But then so the like first you start monster off with would your be... base shit. There's also, like, easier monsters. Mm. Yeah, fair. So it's like at any other RPG where you yeah, start when you off to... with your base crap. Yeah. You kill something small to get extra stuff, and then you craft bigger items until you can get into, like, the biggest, baddest monster in the game. The only RPG that I really, really didn't like was Conan Exile. Yeah, because it was shit. That game was massive. Like, that map was huge you couldn't fast travel anywhere and you start off in the middle of a desert and you have to run all you have to you you just either you have to just walk or run wherever you need to go crafting shit as you go along fighting animals but there's no real story to the game or tutorial or tutorial so it never teaches you how to do anything i think that's why i cracked the shits after like 45 minutes and just deleted it but you can climb almost anything and it doesn't make any sense (laughs) like you can climb up a like a you can climb up a volcano like if you've got enough stamina if you've got enough stamina but then if you run out of stamina stamina you fucking fall to your death so you gotta start all over again but that game would have kind of worked if it just was a little bit smaller that map was just too fucking massive. It was too big. Which I it's usually not something that I complain about. I usually kind of go for bigger the like bigger the map, like the more of the game I get to play. But that's not the case with this. No, I think Red I feel Dead. Like there is a point. I think Red Dead kind of hit that sweet spot of having the map just big enough. I feel like if the map is that big, you need a better way of traveling. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, love tea. Ugh. Yeah, because like if you can't, the thing with Red Dead was, if you were far enough away, you could still ride your horseback, or you could go go to the nearest train station or stagecoach, and yeah. you could use that to get back, which yeah. is technically fast travel. But Conan was just like walk, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> So like you unforgivingly didn't... just like you get get out of here. <laughs> it's like, it's like, kicks you in the ass as he's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But like it was take um our shitty gameplay. <laughs> our bad mechanics. You take you your... walk over to that crocodile <laughs> where it will inevitably kill you because you haven't worked out a craft weapons yet because we never told you <laughs> when you will start again from the middle of the desert. Take your shitty CG abs and fuck off. <laughs> but um yeah, no, like I, it's just I. There are RPG games that I have quite like, and I haven't really played that many. I think like what, what was the other one? Like Skyrim. Skyrim was one of those games. Like it was, that was a fun RPG game, and that was a good uh, Like that was like I really like 
set the bar for good RPG games for me. Because, like, there was good story. It didn't really seem to end. <laughs> oh, no, I've been playing Skyrim for years, and I've still not done all the quests. And they keep coming out with more quests. But, like, there came... Like, there was a time where, like... Oh, there was a time, I like, say, like, like, that fucking old. But, like, there was, like, at a period where they were coming out with DLC. I think it was, like, the Dragonborn DLC. Yeah, the first Dragonborn, and then... Hearthstone? I don't know. <laughs> thing. There was uh, two or three. There was like a vampire one. I remember they came yes, out with that. That's Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker. I remember that one. That was a cool quest to play. It is. And at the end you have to decide whether or not you should be a vampire. Hmm. I became a vampire. I did not. Hmm. It shows. <laughs> it uh, shows how different we are. <laughs> yeah. With the one decision we made differently. Yeah. <laughs> but, I was a va- but I was a werewolf for a while. That was fun. I made that when I found out that you could be a werewolf in Skyrim. I made it. I I made that my mission to become a werewolf as fast as I could. <laughs> the problem with it was, it was never a permanent thing because you could always find the cure for it. Oh yeah, and you're like, if it was this easy to find the cure, why not just cure yourself? Cure all werewolves. But they don't look at it, like, I, I can't remember what they call themselves, but they, um, they don't look at it as a, like, a, as a disease. They just have the cure for it. Yeah, which there's is, a group of people hunting werewolves. You think they would just cure them. all of them. Yeah, so we're not here. And then, find, like, keep one werewolf so that when they want to go back, it's like, just give them a bite. It's like, ah, you're a werewolf again. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that... <laughs> Like, the last episode of Doctor Who that we watched had something to do with werewolves. Like, it explained scientifically, and also... It didn't. It was an alien. It was an alien. It was like, it explained... It explained werewolf in, it like... It did what Doctor Who always does. It di- yeah, it... It just kind of... Uh, it made the look of the werewolf very extraterrestrial. I loved it. It actually worked. I didn't think it would work. But Doctor then, Who always worked. Yeah. Except for the new one. Except for the garbage. <laughs> Fight me. I can't I can't say if it was garbage or not because I've never seen it. Oh my god. Oh. This is what we get for doing early morning podcasts. Yeah. And also a little bit hungover. It was St. Paddy's Day yesterday. You coward. Look, some people call me a lightweight. And they I would like be correct. To, they would be correct, but I like to think of myself. <laughs> As someone who has fun really quick. <laughs> For cheap. For cheap. Look, if you can have fun really fast, really cheap, you know, more power to you. Those are the kind of people I like to party with. You don't like to party. Yeah, exactly. I like to stay home. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I, I nank. Back. <laughs> Everything hurts. <laughs> Fuck. This is a wonderful segment of our podcast. It is we a wonderful. We just complain about how old we are, even though we're like not even out of our twenties yet. Yeah, feels like we are though. No, it doesn't. Well, for you, we it have... doesn't. For me, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what old feels like. Motherfucker. <laughs> you blasted. <laughs> uh, so, Doom comes out next week. It does. Possibly next week. This week. This week, as of release of this podcast, mm. are you going to get all excited and then play it really, really badly? Mm-hmm. I am. Yeah. yeah, I've got, I've got the weekend off. I have this weekend off, so I am, uh, I am going to play that, and I'm most likely going to finish that. And I want to get a, I want to write a review on it because all we've been talking about is Doom ever since they pushed the release back on it. I really want to play it. I really want to write about it. So, yeah, you'll be expecting that. Um, but yeah, no, I am very much excited for Doom. I'm very much excited because of just the enthusiasm that the developers have kind of exuded from it. Like I sat, like I sat down one night and I saw a thing where one of the developers was talking about the bringing back of the like some of the original demons, like just rendered in just rendered HD and just made it look really nice and crisp and all that kind of stuff and just how there are so many different ways that you can rip its head off. <laughs> Yeah. And I, and it's just, I'm not really, I don't really care about the story of Doom. I'm not playing it. I'm not playing it for the story of Doom. 
but I just really want to play it. It just looks so much fun. It looks like the kind of game that I can play that if I've had a really bad day and I just want to have a shot of whiskey and play a game of Doom, like, that's it. That's all That's all I, all I want to do. That sounds great. Is like, it the laser sword? Yeah, I really like that laser sword. I really like it. I think that's replacing the chainsaw. It could be. Yeah, it could be. That makes sense. Yeah, it would make sense, actually. I wonder if it takes place majority of it in hell, or if it takes place in... It's on Earth, isn't it? It's on Earth. Judging by the... I don't know, you'll probably teleport between the... Probably. You're probably... Yeah, of three, there's like Earth, Mars, and hell. Probably. You'd probably end up befriending that giant robot doctor. Dr. Hayden, or whatever his name is. Pretty sure that is his name. But, um, yeah, no, very excited for Doom. And I may have gotten my hopes up for it. Hopefully it's not shit. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. The story won't be good, but then you just want to pull things heads off and... Yeah, exactly. Rip them in half and shit. Yeah. Should be. Should, should. I plan on powering through that game at a speed, at a very reasonable speed. So I might play it on, like, normal. Maybe, maybe easy. And I might play it well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to... I want to have fun with the game as well as get it done and like experience it. And I also, but then you like to torture yourself, so you're gonna play it on like expert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, I can't play games like that. I can't play games on expert, and I don't understand how people can. Like, I like to enjoy the game. <laughs> I like to have a bit of challenge, but also being able to finish the game. I would never be able to finish a game on expert. I ever. enjoy the. Feeling of accomplishment when you finished it on the hardest it can possibly be. <laughs> yeah. When it's like, yeah, you are the best at this. <laughs> it's like topping the leaderboard in Battlefront 2. You're like, yeah, I was the best person on that battlefield. You have not stopped playing Battlefront 2. Like, it's because I realised that four years or five years after it was released, they made it good. Yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> also, I just hate PV. Right. But- Heroes vs. Villains. Oh. It's like my go-to. <laughs> HPV. Yeah. Yeah. I quite enjoy playing the, um, like the arcade, um, like the one-on-one. The duels. The duels. The duels. They're I fun. Do. I enjoy playing that. We'll definitely, we are definitely getting Battlefront 3 for the PS5, so that's fine. Mm. Hopefully they'll have learned from their mistakes and they'll just make it like it is now. I wonder what the, um, the heroes and villains that they're going to release for... Battlefront 3. I would say it will be all of them. Yeah. The abilities will probably be different. Um, I would say there's probably going to be more characters from TV shows and stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Bring me a Sokotano. Yeah, I'm surprised that they didn't do like a DLC where you could buy a Sokotano. <laughs> Well, they're probably just saving her until the next one. Yeah. Or one of the... Or Rex or something like that from the Fibers. Yeah. Um, that would be pretty cool. Uh, who, who else would be a good one? Dexter. Jex- Mace uh, Windu. Mace Windu. He'd be a good one. Dexter. I just want to... I just want one emote for Mace Windu where you're like, Motherfucker. <laughs> Motherfucker. Um, Yaddle. Yaddle. <laughs> be Yaddle. If you be Should Yaddle. just be a skin for Yoda. Oh, Baby Yoda. If they bring Baby Yoda into it. I don't know how. I don't know why. It should be but... a combination of the Mandalorian. Oh, if they bring the Mandalorian into it, that'd be pretty cool. Like a game version of the Mandalorian. I've seen a few skins for other characters, like mods, where that... they've turned like Boba Fett into like Jango Fett and the Mandalorian. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. Um... Darth Maul with robot legs and stuff. Yeah, they've, they, um, what do you call it? They did a mod for Palpatine where they put him in the Senate the robes. Red robes yeah. The red robes. That's pretty cool. I like that. Alright. I think that's it. That's it? I think that's it. Yeah? Yeah. We've run out of stuff. We've run out of stuff. Coronavirus has shut everything else down. Right. So if you want to read our news and articles, it's realtalkpcd.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. Yes. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Review by Lurch. And if you want to follow me, I am at Jared Kiddo One. You can follow Real Talk on Instagram at 
real talk underscore pop culture discussions. Mm -hmm. And as always, keep it real. And stay sexy.